scandal. It's hard enough ruling the free world without having to juggle a wife and a mistress at the same time. And as President Fitzgerald Grant, he's learning that all is not fair in love and war in the show's craziest plot twist yet. Please welcome Tony Goldwyn. Christina Aguilera and these amazing impersonations she did of right. Cher and Britney Spears. So has she was it, good. She was good. Right. Yeah. Has anyone tried to impersonate you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that there was a guy who I wasn't even really friends with, but who I went to high school with, and I heard that he was going around to like bars uh, and <laughs> trying to pick up girls, saying he was me. <laughs> And saying, yeah, I'm Tony Goldwyn, I work in the movies, and, uh, you know. Wow. Does yeah, he even look he like, like you? In color Not at all. <laughs> Nothing like me. But apparently he scored, so I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm That's what kind of pull you have, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> so. so, Tony, you took your daughter, who is 24 years mm -hmm. of age, That's Anna, right. mm -hmm. and you took her to an Oscar event. I did, yeah. She's, um, uh... It's really fun having grown kids because uh, I have like someone to hang out with, and she, you know, it's, and it, she gets kicked out of it. And um, she's a young writer, and so she gets to meet a lot of people that she'll yeah. be eventually working with, sure. and we have fun together. So, oh, um, so sweet. The only problem is I have to make it really clear that she's my daughter, <laughs> <laughs> because we are in Hollywood after all. And, uh, I used to, you know, um, when she sort of became 18 and like a woman and a beautiful woman, uh, we'd go into a store and people would say, oh, how long have you been married? Oh, God. Oh. Like, He's my dad. <laughs> and it was mortifying. And oh, so God. now I'm really good at going, this is my daughter, Anna, when I introduce her. <laughs> so, okay, so you've been married for 28 years to uh -huh. your wife, Jane. Mm -hmm. um, when you were only, you got married when you were 21? Is no, that... we met when I was 21. You met when you were 21 got married? Got married. Okay. Yeah. So it, was it love at first sight? Well, yeah. I mean, it, the way this worked out, uh, we met, um, it was my very first job. I was still in college, and it was working at a, a, a fabulous theater called the Williamstown Theater Festival, which is like a big summer theater festival on the East Coast. And um, she was, she's a, uh, a production designer. She designed sets for movies and at that time for the theater. And so she was a young designer, and my, the man who became my best friend in the world uh, had a big crush on her, and he said, you've got to meet this girl, Jane. You know, we were all young actors. And, oh. and um, I said, okay. And he said, she's a real athlete. And he said, I went running with her. She gets up at 5 in the morning to go running, and I went with her, but I didn't have any running shoes, so I went barefoot. Oh. And my feet are bleeding. He's like a New York kid. He's like from Queens. And he said, <laughs> you know, and he said to her, yeah, we go running in barefoot in Queens. And so <laughs> I said, well, take some running shoes. I gave him some running shoes that were two sizes too big for him. <laughs> and he said, well, you come with us. So we went running one day up in the country, mm -hmm. and Jane takes us up to this pond, and... <laughs> She strips off her clothes and dives into the pond naked. Wow. And I was like, I'm down with that. So I strip off my clothes and I dive in after her. And my friend Tony, also named Tony, was like, I'm from New York City. I'm from like, there's cement. There's, they're like live animals in that pond. I'm not going in. So I was like, well, dude, you kind of lose. So yeah, you got shortly the thereafter, I got the girl. Yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> We want to pay our respects because earlier this year, um, Hollywood lost a legend yeah. with the passing of your father, yeah, thanks. Samuel Gold uh, Goldwyn Jr. Right. Um, what was he like as a dad? Oh, he was amazing, my dad. He he was um, 
the most generous and in addition to being like really accomplished and kind of brilliant, he was just, a, he, he was like a super proud, obsessively proud dad. He would, um, for, in high school it was really embarrassing when I decided I really wanted to be an actor because whenever I was in a high school play, as soon as I'd come out on stage, he would leap up and take picture, flash pictures <laughs> in the audience, and he's six foot four. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh God, he's doing it again. And I could, you know, and then when I, my, when I had my Broadway debut as an actor, when I first was in my first play on Broadway, Laura Linney and I were doing a play together. And um, there's a tradition when big stars come out on Broadway, the audience applauds when they make their first entrance. Well, I wasn't really a big star. I was young and, and uh, but when my father came to see the play, I make my first entrance, and he starts doing this, oh, and the whole no. audience burst into applause. Yes. So they were like, oh, we're supposed to be applauding, you know? So he was like, I was like, Bob, you gotta come back more often. <laughs> much, much more with Tony Goldwyn when we come right back. Let go I went to war for you. For you. I have been riding and dying for you. I fixed an election for you. Sacrificed everything to keep you in office. We all did. Cyrus, James, Jerry, Harrison, Melly, every one of us. I was your mistress. And I was willing to give it all up for you. Which is exactly the problem. I tried to give up my wife for you. My office. And you backed out every time. Of course I did. If you gave up the presidency, what did I do all this for? That was a scene from Scandal. And we're back with TV's commander in chief, Tony Goldwyn. There are hazards to falling in love with strong women. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Your presidency ain't no joke. You, <laughs> you started an international war to save Olivia when she was kidnapped, and mm -hmm. she's not impressed? Right? She's hard to please. Real talk. talk. What? I'll she's hard. That. She's tough to please. <laughs> but okay, what was, I mean, well, this, this is my question. Forget Olivia. What was Fritz most of the most? What's Fritz? What up? You a macaroni. What was you thinking? When you, were like, you were like, you ain't down for me, and I did all this for you? What was you thinking as president? <laughs> I felt betrayed by her, really. I'm talking about you know, because it was, it was, uh, it was not easy. It was a, a, a terrible decision Fitz had to make, to you know, put lives at risk. And he was, even though he justified it politically, he was doing it to save Olivia from getting her head chopped off. That's right. And um, he almost didn't do it, and he decided he was going to do it. And Melly, actually, as my wife said, you need, you love her, you got to do the right thing. And I did this very difficult thing, and she throws it back in my face. Ugh. Not only that, but in what she says there, she says, you know, you know, because you not being, living up to what you should have done ethically as president makes it all worth nothing, meaning our love was worth nothing. Ugh. So for Fitz, it was like, what? Say what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was relieved though because I could see on you know we do live tweeting with the fans during yeah. the broadcast yeah. and while this while we were shooting all of this I was really worried for Fitz because I thought people are going to completely turn against him yes. and think you went to war you know soldiers died you did this That's like right. for <laughs> Helen of Troy and, oh, and yeah. uh, you know not appreciate how difficult it was but it was the opposite yeah. the fans were like no you go to war to say oh, yeah. yeah. And yes. when she came in on Twitter when the when it was being broadcast, you know, people were going, Fitz is they're waiting for Fitz to show up at her apartment, they're gonna have their reunion. And and um, when I come to the door in that scene, people were like, oh my god, he's there, they're gonna get back together. And when she threw it in my face, people were like, What? <laughs> you know, they were so upset. Um, and on my side, which is kind of unusual. Because <laughs> in Chandraland, the guys usually get the short end of things. Speaking of uh, tweets, some, mm -hmm. some of the Scandal fans tweet some very suggestive things at you. So can you give us an example of a yes, suggestive? Yes, they do. Some are too suggestive to say on television. But <laughs> my favorite is, uh, or was, uh, no vagina can be apolitical around you. <laughs> so 
I took that as the highest form of political yeah. flattery. Yeah. <laughs> well, moving right along. Thank you, Sharon. Yes. <laughs> I know you can't divulge too much, mm -hmm. but what else True. can we expect in the rest of the season? Oh, my gosh. Well, now you know Olivia's home. Yeah. And Olivia's yeah. safe. Yeah. Not very grateful. But, no. uh, but, but um, you know, we will... Uh, God, look, I can't tell you anything. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, you know, uh, the obvious, which is that it's brutal for Fitz because we're leaving them after that episode in a really rough place. And, uh -huh. um, it, it, again, you'll be surprised by where Shonda goes. She, she, she pushes things right to the edge and then mm -hmm. flips it around on you, and I can't tell you any more than that. Sorry. Oh, we'll be watching. Oh. Tony Goldwyn, everyone. Scandal returns next Thursday night, March 5th at 9 o'clock on ABC.